Well, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me to a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So tonight we are continuing the inchworm embroidery. We are working on our uh, ABC Alphabet Animal Series. And uh, we are on a week I. <laughs> so we'll be working on the inchworm for the rest of the week this week. And then we'll be working on the jellyfish next week. We are going in alphabetical order here. So, all right, let's get going. Thanks again for joining me. Okay, here is our cute little dude so far. I'm going to scoot you on in. Okay. There we are. So, all right. So we left off last night by doing uh, a bunch of satin stitch and we're going to continue the satin stitch here. Uh, so, ooh, and you might have noticed I started winding all my floss. It's so much easier now. Uh, I do have like a pile of little scraps yet. I think I have a few more colors to wind. Uh, and then there are like all my little pieces that I'm keeping. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to store those quite yet. I mean, I, I, do, I might actually use like these itty bitty pieces. So I, I want that. I want to have them on hand. Uh, they're just not, uh, not going to be as organized as this. I don't think I might like kind of wind them around the ones that exist, but I don't know. We'll see. But so far, this is making me feel way cleaner, way better. <laughs> so I'm happy. I finally, finally did. I must have, um, I must have like six colors left because I think I counted all these, right? So anywho, I will work on that later. For now, I'm still pulling from my little pile of scraps here. And I think we need, uh, this is the piece that we cut last night and I need two more pieces for that. And I wanted to let you guys know again that uh, for just during this live, which will be about an hour, uh, if you purchase over $20 in the shop, I will send you a free mystery gift. You don't need any uh, code or anything like that. I will just look at whoever purchases uh, during during this hour here. So thanks again for hopping on in. All right, I'm using two strands. Uh, we're going to weave in these ends and uh, uh, then we will continue our satiny stitchy stitch here. So I hope everyone's having a lovely, lovely day. Ooh, you guys, it is also June 1st. So it is embroidery of the month um, switch over. So we have a new embroidery of the month for June. Uh, I almost forgot to share with you guys. <laughs> so here is our June embroidery. It is our cute little lilacs pattern. So we'll be stitching this uh, the third week this month. So not next week, but the week after. Uh, I am so excited to do all these. And, you know, we went on, uh, we went on uh, vacation just to visit my parents' house. And we came back and all the lilacs were just done. So it must have been like super duper hot when we were gone. Because they were just, just perfect when we left. So I'm kind of sad that it's just, they're all just all brown and dried up now. I thought for sure with all the rain that we got when we are gone that that's what would do it in. Like I wouldn't see anything on the branches at all, but I think it was heat. They look just brown. So sad. So I'm happy that I could actually stitch them. They smell, I mean, I can kind of smell them a little bit, but it's not, not nice like how it was last week with the perfect lilacs. Oh, Catherine says the new embroidery of the month is beautiful. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to stitch that one. I think it'll be fun. Fun, chill stitching. That'll be nice. All right, I'm doing that railroading of the thread again where I, uh, I'm i stitching with two strands, but I'm putting the strand or my needle in between the two strands, and that's going to make our stitches lay a bit flatter here uh, for, for this satin stitch. So let's keep going with that. Hold on. I'm going to scoot you guys just the hair all right let's keep going so I'm hoping that we can finish for sure finish this satin stitch the um, the gold or the orange that I'm doing now and then uh, um, I'd like to move on to the yellow I don't know if we'll get the yellow done uh, like I said we started this a little late this week I think um, you know because I wasn't here 
on Monday, and it is a lot of satin stitch, and satin stitch takes time. So we may go over. I think we're going to have some free, like, a bunch of free days at the end of June. Uh, maybe even, like, two free weeks, which is great. So um, during that time, uh, during that time, maybe we can finish it up. Oh, thanks for the follows, you guys. I appreciate y'all being here again. All right. I think I can fit one more in there. I can probably fit two, but I think one will do the job. So I already, if you subscribe to the Embroidery of the Month, um, or, or ordered earlier today or last night, your orders will be going out already. So you should have received a shipping code from me. And those are all, uh, they'll be picked up tomorrow. And for anyone wanting to stitch right away, we do have the PDF pattern option as well. Ooh, this is going fast. Uh, you know, we laid it all out yesterday, so I have all these kind of um, goal posts. Um, so those are doing good. Oh, Amanda says, I've only done satin stitch once. Is it better to make a few sections like you did? Uh, why I'm doing this is, like, I, I'm basically making, um, God, I keep wanting to say goal posts, but that's not the word. <laughs> guides. I'm, I keep making, like, guide stitches. So I actually drew those lines with pencil first. And uh, you, you can just start from one side and go all the way to the other. That's, that's totally just fine. But uh, what makes this a bit easier is that if I only fill in the spaces in between, I'm more likely to be uh, parallel to my stitches the whole time. So uh, the point is uh, for them to be guides for me so I don't like veer my stitches so they don't start like angling one way and then angling the other way or whatever. I want them all like super duper parallel. So I actually drew with pencil first just some parallel lines on it and then I stitched those first. And it's it's literally just a visual guide for me. That's, that's the only reason um, I did those first. So that's, it just makes it easier. Like, cause now I don't really have to think, I just have to fill in the space in between um, the two spaces or the, the two lines. And as long as I keep looking at those two lines, all the ones in the middle should be pretty parallel. Versus if I just started on one side and then just, you know, I know for a fact it would just veer like crazy. So I, I gotta get those guide posts in for myself. But yeah, so definitely recommend. Yeah, and I, like I said, I just drew on with pencil first. I know I'm going to be covering it up with stitches, so, you know, who cares if there's some pencil lines underneath. But right here, I can tell that, you know, this space is a bit smaller than this space. Like, my stitches are kind of veering this way a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try and veer them back straight so they're parallel um, to this one again. I mean, it's super duper subtle, but if I just keep kind of checking, checking that, then the overall appearance is going to be that it's kind of straight or that they're all parallel. And that's much easier to see when, um, when you got those little guide posts in. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think I'm going to need a new piece of thread already. Dang, this is going, you sucking up the thread, all the satin stitch. I don't quite need one yet, but it feels awfully short for just, just starting. I like this little rainbow inchworm. It's going to be so cute once we get all the colors in. All right, I think one more to just kind of push all these stitches where they need to be. And again, I'm doing that railroad technique where I put my th needle in between both threads. And then when I uh, bring the thread down, it hopefully keeps those two threads like parallel to get um, to each other and not like twisting up 
not form, forming a twist because then it'll look like I just have it'll appear as if I've done this whole thing with one strand and went like one strand next to each other which is like when sand stitch looks its shiniest and best is when you're just using one strand but you can use three strands you can use four strands six strands two strands um you know they all just have a different look but I am trying to mimic that one strand appearance but doing it twice as fast uh, by by doing it with two strands in that railroad method. And I think, oh my god, can I get one more stitch? I think I can, can get one more stitch and then I'm going to have to weave this end in. This might have been a mistake. I don't really have that much left. Okay. <laughs> I definitely can't do those last like four stitches or, or something, which is a bummer, but whatever. That's how it goes, I guess. I'm just going to weave in this end. And now, now I can probably weave in that uh, end that we reserved from last night. That's with our away knot. We'll be doing that again with our, our next color here. But let's trim. Oh my gosh, I cannot pick that up. There we go. <laughs> Fingers aren't working today. All right, oh, and then let's snip our little away knot. This is just so I could reserve the, uh, reserve this little piece of floss on the back so I could, for later, so I could weave it in now. I feel like a little fuzzle hidden, hiding in there. Gina says the railroading is keeping your stitches really smooth. Yeah, I think they're looking super duper duper smooth. Um, I'll try and show you guys close up. But yeah, by keeping all the stitches in line, it just makes, when the light hits it, hits the stitches, it just like gives it that shiny look. And because they're all, all the, all the thread is laying right next to each other really nicely, uh, the light's like hitting it all at the same angle, which accentuates that satiny-ness. Boop. All right. So there we are. Super duper shiny. Uh, the yellow you can really kind of see, or the orange. See, like when I tilt it, it gets like, you can see it dark on one side and light, and that light just shifts. That's um, from getting, that's just like the light hitting it all at the same angle. Uh, which you get by having all of your stitches just lay really nicely next to each other. Now I'm going to have to use my last little uh, segment here of two. You know what? It's, it's a little twisted, so I am going to, even though I'm still going to just use these two, I am going to actually separate them because uh, then they will just lay a little bit nicer and I won't be dealing with that twist. So there we go. And oh, I must put my needle back over here. Okay. There we go. So last few stitches of the orange, and then we're going to move on to yellow. Could really move on to any color we wanted, but I'm just going to just go in color by color here. All right, and let's weave in this end. Now I can weave in the backs of the stitches since I have actual stitches here. I didn't, didn't, didn't uh, when I started with this color. Uh, usually I like doing the outline first because then there's all sorts of stitches to weave in the back when I get started. But I do like, uh, it makes just a nice finished edge. You know, like, see, you can see the satin stitch here. I mean, if you look really closely, it's got like a, like a bumpy little edge because that's where all my threads ended, like, ended up just hitting, hitting the line. So if I go over with a back stitch now, after I do the satin stitches, it's just going to clean up that edge. You're not going to see that edge at all. So that's, um, that's kind of the deal there. So that's why in this case, I'm doing all the satin stitch first, even though it's annoying to start because I like, I typically like weaving in my ends and there's no places to weave in without those back stitches there. All right, I think maybe about six more. 
Oh, Debbie says when when sat and stitch, I usually concentrate so much on keeping the top looking nice that I forget to check the knots and tangles on the back. Oh man! So one thing I like doing for that is I always kind of have my my left hand touching the back. Uh, so I mean, you can kind of see the shadow of my hand through. So I can feel like I'm I'm feeling the needle go through every time. Like I'm I'm actually got my my finger feeling the needle and then I move out of the way. And then I actually even like with my with my left hand I kind of push my thread out of the way for while I'm working on my next stitch. So here I'm coming up. So I've actually moved with my finger I've moved the thread out of the way. Ooh, this is a little uncomfortable holding it this position, but then I can pull this back and I can feel that last little bit before I let go. So that's kind of what my left hand is doing with every stitch basically on the back. Uh, and that takes some practice and some feeling, but by having my left hand involved there or whatever your backhand is, um, I feel like that's really helped me reduce uh, the back tangles and that sort of thing and the back knots just because I can always kind of it's like having an extra pair of eyes almost on the back, but just with my fingers. Uh, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So that's like, ugh, that's a bummer. I got some stupid knots back there. <laughs> but as long as the front looks nice, then I don't really care. It's just more of an annoyance. But so far, so good here. All right, so I'm approaching that edge, so I'm just gonna, um, you know, I'm just gonna keep following it, so my stitches are gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller here. Ooh, thanks for the follows and shares. Hey, Nolene. Hello there, PNF friends. Yes. All right, I think, eh, will this be the last one? I think I might need one more. Although I am going to have those those back stitches go along here. So you know what? I probably don't need one more. Usually if it was just going to end in a satin stitch, I would, I would um, go enough to cover up my outside line. But again, I'm going to be doing a green back stitch around this whole thing. So I don't really think I need to do that. I think we're probably good right there. Then I have some thread left over. So I'm going to weave in this end. Back's looking awfully nice yet. But yeah, thanks again, everyone, for joining me for some stitching tonight. We will be working on this for the rest of the week, so through Friday. And actually, I'm not, I'm kind of thinking we're not going to get it done by then. Uh, all the satin stitch takes a little bit longer to do. Uh, so we will come back to this probably after we stitch the embroidery of the month, the third week of the month. Uh, oh, we might actually next week, next week we stitch the jellyfish. Uh, let's see. Let me show you guys that. Here's um, the jellyfish. This guy will be stitching next week. And uh, I don't think this guy's going to take all that long. So once we finish him uh, next week, we'll, we'll go back to, to this guy and finish, finish him up. All right. Where am I at? Yellow. I have all my like pretty organized thread now. Except for this, got all one little cloud, <laughs> cloud of floss that I have to organize yet. I didn't quite finish that in time for tonight, but ugh, this makes me feel so much better. Um, now I don't have to dig through all that. Although I am going to dig through because I, I might have some scrap yellow, which I do. Ooh, that's not very long. Maybe this is a longer piece. Mm, that looks like it. So, and both of these are too short. I've been saving the pieces just in case, you know, I need like two more stitches left uh, or worth, uh, uh, but this is too strong to, st or too, um, too short to start a, shorter than I'd like to start a whole new uh, satin stitch. So I'm gonna just get, I don't know, we're gonna use up a lot for this again, cause that's a pretty big section. So I'm getting my like, yeah, 24 inches, two feet or so, kind of my go-to. All right, um, but first up, I'm going to draw in my little guidelines again, because I just think that always helps so much with, with satin stitch. So we've kind of been, I've been kind of doing the satin stitch as it, the direction of the satin stitch, um, the same direction as the inchworm. So I'm kind of following, following the shape. I'm still making them parallel along the line, so I'm just kind of getting it as close as possible. So this first one was kind of at this angle, the orange was at this angle. So I'm thinking 
um, this one would be at, at this angle and then, you know, dun dun dun. So let's, let's just assume that. So kind of like perpendicular to the body. I'm thinking kind of like, I don't know. I think that looks pretty good. Slightly off of horizontal. So, all right, so I'm going to just draw, I'm just going to kind of keep having, having that space. So I'm, I'm just attempting to make these all parallel. That's my goal here. These are just, uh, the, the only reason I'm doing this is so I can, um, hopefully make these lines as parallel as possible. I mean, I could use a ruler and plop these in, but I'm just eyeballing it. I keep having them. This is about a good, good spot for me. You could go ahead and have it again, like add some more lines. We'll do just two in here, but I think this has worked pretty well on, on these last ones about, I don't know, this is maybe eh, an eighth of an inch, maybe a little, not quite a quarter of an inch apart. I think that's worked well. So now I'm going to go up with the yellow. Or what did I do last time? I kind of went, I went down with the yellow and then I started, I went all the way up. So I'll do the same thing. All right, so let's get our two, two strands. I like again to bop the end that kind of separates the strands and then once I can isolate one I will just uh, hold it in between my fingers and pull and it's gonna look like a crazy mess but it always releases really nicely and I just run my hand through it again and we need one more of those and this is just such a fast way to split threads I think Zoop! there we go that fast <laughs> and then I just have to do that little extra extra deed of putting it back together again but that's usually easy enough. All right. And I, again, I'm doing just two strands. I'm going to switch to three strands. I think when we do the, the back stitch, since that's kind of what I've done all of these, um, letters so far, we've done a through H already. And, uh, it's just for the satin stitch. So I can get this really clean satin stitch. Ooh, what's the back look like so far? So good. The back is, Pretty well contained. I think I can trim this little bit off. A little straggler. So, so far so good. I'm liking it. So I do weave in my ends. So that's why uh, within these, it's kind of a little bit of a mess, but that's just because I'm weaving in the ends. So I don't start with knots. Uh, I, I, I start by weaving in the end, but I can really only weave. I usually, what I mean is I weave into the backs of stitches that already exist right so normally i would uh, do the back stitch first so i could weave these in the backs of those stitches but i'm doing the satin stitch first just so i can go over the edges with back stitches when i'm when i'm done and it'll just clean it up so i don't really have anything to weave into uh, i don't have any backs of stitches to weave in yet because there's nothing there so in that case i'm going to start with a uh, um something called an away knot. And actually let's just do it on this side. So I'm going to tie a little knot on this side and we'll thread the other side here. I'm going to just trim it so it's more equal. Fuzzles out of here. So I'm going to basically reserve some thread that I can weave in later. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with this stitch up here and go down this way. So I'm going to start actually from the front about three and a half, four inches away from my starting point. And uh, when I come up on this first stitch, like so, uh oh, I already have a knot, I feel like. <laughs> That's fun. Oh goodness, already a knot. All right, there we go, we got it. But when I come up with that first stitch, you can see I have like this little bit uh, on the back here. That's kind of my reserve for later. So I will weave in that end uh, when we're done. So it wastes a little bit of thread at the beginning, but it allows me to stitch without any knots, which I personally love because then my thread doesn't catch on anything in the back. I just think it makes things a little cleaner. <coughs> Oh man, you guys, my voice again is crazy. You know what? I think it must be allergies. I've been, I was sneezing um, 
all weekend at my parents house oh my gosh i am gonna have to get a drink hold on a sec all right but yeah we were outside all um like the whole time not the whole time but like for a good portion of the time it was so beautiful so wonderful outside ah! and got to see chad kitty uh, <laughs> but anyway, man, I was sneezing, sneezing more than usual. Not as much as my, my brother and, uh, my other brother's girlfriend. They, they both have heavier allergies than me for sure. Um, but I got my sneeze on every once in a while too. And now I just feel like maybe it's in, I don't know, a little bit more. So boo. <laughs> So don't mind me if I have to get a drink of water here and there. Um, but you guys, I saw some baby deer. So I, I got some photos. So I'll have to take, um, I'll have to like post some photos. Uh, but John and I were just walking. Um, there's like this little woods. And we were just walking through, uh, getting back to my parents' house. And... Uh, I was like, look there or whatever. And it, like right like two feet away from us, there was a little, a little doe. Now, yeah, like a little, wait, no, not a doe. What are the little Bambi things called? <laughs> the doe is a female deer. Doe, a deer, a female deer. Um, <laughs> the little fawn, the fawn. That's what I'm trying to think of. Um, so we saw a little fawn there all with his little white dots on his back and stuff. And uh, then we took a step away from him and, and we're like, look out, because uh, there was another one. So we saw two little fawns just hiding in the grass in the woods, just, you know, tucked away, pretending to be invisible. And uh, I got a photo of them uh, before we, you know, got out of their way. But that was a, just such a fun surprise. I've never seen a fawn uh, close up like that, I don't think. So I'll have to, I'll have to share, share, um, a photo of that in the, uh, when we're done here, I'll, I'll put it in the penguin and fish crafters group. We'll do that. Okay. So I'm going to, but, ah, it was just so cute. So I'm going to, I think, start where I'm at here. So I, I put all my guideposts in. So that's what I'm doing here. This is, again, just so I can theoretically keep my lines as parallel as possible. So I only have to be looking between two points uh, when I do the stitches versus nothing. <laughs> you know, uh, I only have to be looking through two points to get the two points or to get the stitches in between here parallel versus trying to get it parallel uh, from one side to the other. But I know, I know from experience that I'm, I would veer off this way and then I'd try and correct it and veer off this way. And so then they wouldn't be all that parallel. Um, the more parallel you get them, I think the more satiny it looks because the light will hit um, all the stitches at the same angle. You can see it kind of shimmer. Uh, I think it does that nicely when it, you know, appears like you have one thread, like one single thread, but like all lined up. Uh, so anyway, my guideposts are in. Let's uh, go from my first one this way first. We'll fill in that little kind of pointy space that I got here, and then I'll then I'll go upwards in the other other direction. I'm still splitting the stitches so that they lay flat next to each other theoretically that one was kind of weird but oh uh kathy's saying i thought you had started using a long single thread and then doubled up to create two i didn't do that for for this um that's the i i love starting that way though when you when you're stitching with just two threads you use one long thread and then fold it in half because then you can do the loop method of starting. But I think the loop method of starting works really well with like a back stitch, but I, it doesn't work quite as well with a satin stitch because both parts of the stitch are sometimes really far away from each other. So it doesn't work as well. So I just did the away knot method um, where I weave in the ends instead of having that little loop. Um, so I just got started with two strands instead of the one folded in half. All right, I think that's probably good enough there. Eh, I kind of want to stick one more. This looks like I kind of did it too far apart. 
Um, so the edge will be covered up with the back stitches again, so I'm not too worried about that, but I want to get this kind of little one, little stitch in the middle here. It's kind of an awkward little space to be filling. But, all right, I think, that, I think that's decent. All right, let's go up. So now I'm just filling in in between uh, uh, the two lines. So I'm really, like, now I don't have to look at the whole piece. I only have to look at... Uh, that space and I'm just trying to keep things parallel within that space which is way easier than keeping it parallel across the whole thing and I'm just going on the outer edge I'm holding it sideways now just because it's the most comfortable for me personally to go from like the bottom up with a satin stitch I don't know quite why that is like there's no need I could could do it this way but I don't know for some reason this is feeling comfy so Go with what's comfy. That's that's what I think. This yellow is so citrusy and bright. I'm liking it. All right, this is your <laughs> friendly reminder again, you guys, that uh, if you order $20 or more during this live, which will be another, I don't know, half hour or so, um, order $20 or more in the shop and I will throw in a free mystery gift. I've been having so much fun making those mystery gifts for you guys. So we've been doing this um, all week so far and, and last week and it's been really fun to kind of curate some mystery gifts. For you so there's no code necessary um i just will look at what you know orders were placed during during um the live and uh, then just adding adding one to your order <laughs> amy says look how neat your flosses are i know i just uh, wound i all uh, almost all of them i got a little cloud of them here yet <laughs> <laughs> this is what it, this used to look like uh, before I wound these all um, about an hour ago. Uh, but look how shiny and rainbowy and pretty and bright they are. Ugh, and they look so cute in, a, in the little strawberry tray. Like, I'm just loving these trays so much. Just grab and go for projects. But yeah, isn't it so much prettier and more organized now? I think it'll be a lot easier for when we do um, the, next, um, the next alphabet animals. We'll be able to just kind of um you know i'm trying to trying to see how far i can get these to last in this project of 26 letters so and i'm not doing um i'm not going like strictly i mean this one i kind of am this one i'm being i'm using the same colors as here but i haven't been so strict on all of them uh with using the same colors as the original so uh by having them wound like this i can definitely see what thread we have more of so like you know like the for the jellyfish for example we might choose you know one color over another like we might use you know dark purple since we have more of that than light purple although that's probably about equal you know but yeah so we can we can um make some color decisions based on what we have left over a lot easier now i think i'm excited for that jellyfish He's got all them cute little French knots on it. But actually, I'm really enjoying, I'm really enjoying uh, the satin stitch on this. It's kind of, I feel like I've grown to love satin stitch. It was not a first love. <laughs> but I, I am really liking it now. And I, I, you know, I'm digging this two strands that you split, uh, split as you stitch them down. You Through the railroad technique, that's what, what it's called, where we're, we're just putting the needle in between the two stitches because then they lay flatter next to each other and that's really I mean I think it's being really effective for this like it does it does make things shiny and, and a bit nicer everyone thanks again everyone who got the uh, embroidery of the month. We got the little lilacs. I was so hoping I'd come home and have some some lilacs left here, but <sighs> nope. I think I might have taken some video though of them before we left. I hope I did. Uh, 
Oh, <laughs> Noeline says, I, I did mine like this once. I spent ages whining them. Uh, looked great for a short time. Now messy again, boo. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and I, I, I don't think I'm seeing the rest of your comment here. Did I see the... <laughs> uh, all right. I, I, I kind of... Eh, I probably didn't need another one here, but I just feel like there was a tiny little bit more of a gap that I needed to fill. So, all right. We're looking decent, I think. And, all right, next section... All right, and if it's looking like a little goofy, you can always stick your needle in there and kind of like shimmy it around underneath the stitches. And I think that kind of sometimes helps to line things up a little bit better and flatten things up and even things out. But I think it's looking pretty good. All right. Oh, you're, t you're tidy envious. I have been in like tidying up mode lately for sure. Oh, Kathy says, my mystery gift, gift was awesome. Thank you. Oh, th that makes me so happy. Um, okay, Amy, if I wanted to place an order but want you to hold shipping on it, oh, can I put that in the text box? For sure, to hold shipping it. Yes, um, yes, that's a great idea. Uh, there, There's a note section when you check out, Amy. Just write your note in there. Uh, it gets flagged. Uh, whenever anyone writes a note or a custom message or whatever, um, it'll get flagged. So yeah, I can definitely set something aside for you for sure. Oh, Anne says the tanning post I made, it's crazy amazing some of the things they made. Oh, I must have missed that. I'm going to look for it. Did you, Anne, did you post it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group? I've been like itching to do more tatting. Mom was doing so much beautiful tatting when I was there, uh, when I was visiting. So now I'm just like, I really want to get tatting to get tatting again okay my threads are not the same length anymore which makes me think I might have a little knot on the back here somewhere and I think this is gonna be my last stitch with this thread because I'm I'm gonna be out time to weave in the ends but looking good so far eh, can't really see it anywhere so good all right weaving in the ends three times is my go-to that's kind of what locks it in the third time. There we go. All right. And let's trim. All right. And then just like the orange one, I don't think I'm going to cut away my away knot, which is my reserve thread to weave in later. I don't think I'm going to do that yet uh, until I have more stitches because this isn't, you know, if I trim this, this isn't a lot to weave in there. So I'm going to wait till I have some more stitches in back again. I can just let that be. That's not going to be in my way. But now I do have stitches here, so I can weave in my next my next stitches into there. I don't have to um, do another away knot. All right, so let's get uh, two more threads. So one at a time, zoop, and zoop. Always needs a sound effect. Oh, Noeline says, it must be a spring thing. It is winter in Australia. So clutter is my winter. Whoa. <laughs> I feel like I've been working on it since winter. But yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm definitely feeling some spring cleaning, spring organization. And I mean, I feel like I'm a little bit on a roll now um, because I, I did over the past like two weeks, I, I organized the, just like in breaks here and there, I organized uh, all my craft supplies, <laughs> which took ages. Um, well, it didn't take ages, but well, it did take ages. It's been like that for a long time, unorganized in the basement. And now, now I have like with like, you know, wool yarn with wool yarn, you know, quilting weight or fat quarters with fat quarters, just painting stuff with painting stuff. I have it all kind of just organized and I just love it. Um, but yeah, so now, but by doing that, I kind of discovered a whole pile of unfinished projects or potential projects that I saved or just like neat things that I've saved for some reason. And, uh, uh now I'm in like a, a, I'm back to like, let's finish all the things, um, mode, which I feel like is kind of cleaning too. So I'm, I'm finishing up some small little projects here and there, or like if I had like this, like a cool piece of fabric that I was saving for. 
I don't know, to make a pillow or something. I'm just doing it. I'm just getting it done, all the small little projects done. So I have some jeans to hem. I have one more pillow that I want to make out of a recycled sweater. Oh, and I've, I found a few kind of finished embroideries that I didn't really, that, that are small that I didn't really have a purpose. Like I, I was using it to film something and I want to turn those into patches for my, my um, shirt. So there's just a bunch of teeny projects that I'd love to just crank through. Ooh, and you guys, I got my my small chunky boy in the mail too uh, when we were gone. I haven't opened it yet all the way, uh, but I want to I want to do a little video of that. So I I got the so that's my crochet ergonomic crochet hook holder. That's that that silicone um, thing. I, I got a medium sized one that works with I don't know my medium sized crochet hooks, but I got a I ordered a small one. The shipping takes takes a while because I think she's just bombarded with orders. Um, so great for her. That's fine. I can wait. And uh, so I got a small one for my tiny, tiny little metal crochet hooks that I do the doilies with. So I, I want to test it out on that doily that I'm working on. And I have a hunch that the moment I do that, I'm going to want to just try and finish that project too, which will take hours and hours and hours. But I'm definitely in the, like, let's get all these old projects out the door mode. <laughs> Ooh, and speaking on that, too, I uh, finished up the um, embroidery, <laughs> embroidery of the month. I finished up the, pretty much, the granny square quilt. I have a couple more ties to, to do because um, I tied the middle, so I'm going to film the rest of that. Um, but I, I sewed, I had to bring it to my parents' house because I needed my mom's machine to have the walking foot, the walking quilting foot. And I had to put in a few more straight lines. And I was deciding if I was going to do more ties, but then I think I was showing mom and we just decided, and let's just get it done and make it be just pretty and cute. So um, I'm going to finish the ties and then I'm going to wash it just so we can see the difference between like before the ties are washed and then after the ties are washed because they'll like scrunch up into like little wool balls which I think is always so cute. I do need to make a label yet though the thing that I always forget about and uh, you know never want to do but I, I, I think we deserve a label for that that project. We worked on that together you guys for like two years right so um, I'll definitely have a show and tell of that soon. It's still packed. I, it's still in the bin here piled um, underneath a bunch of other stuff but definitely um, we'll show you guys that and post pictures Ugh, it feels good to be that far on that that project though we got a few more quilts to get off that um, old project list but this is a good this is good momentum good momentum for sure so I feel good about that all right, we're totally going to finish this yellow stripe tonight. I wasn't positive that we'd get it all completely done, uh, but I think we might even be able to start the next one, which would be great because, like I said, I'm not sure we're going to finish this by Friday, but it'd be really cool if we did. Ugh, I don't think we, I don't think that's going to happen. So we'll, we'll pick this up again when we get done with the jellyfish. Should have done the jellyfish first, because um, I think that'll go faster in this this short week since I, you know, I wasn't here on Monday. Um, but we're going in order. Uh, Catherine says labels are always hard for me to do. Yeah, I I have no idea what I'm gonna do for a label. Um, I don't know. I kind of liked with the splendid sampler how we had almost like a web address on there to link to the to the um, project. Oops, I didn't split that one. Thought I did, I didn't quite get in there. There we go. But I don't know, maybe, I don't know. You know, I've been kind of wanting to make some, some uh, quilt labels. Maybe this would be a good excuse to make like a quilt label. Ugh, you guys, I'm so not winning thread chicken. Boo! These, um, these big wide area up here 
is taking forever. Ooh, hello, Schmelly. So cute. Thank you. Hope you're doing well. Missed you this weekend. For sure. All right, I got weaving this end. Two and three. Okay. Boop. Let's trim that. I was kind of thinking, ooh, maybe I'd have enough for the to finish it with this my leftover um, away knot, which I'm gonna I'm gonna actually weave that in now too. But nah, at most that would give me one stitch, and I definitely have more more than that to do. I think I got like one in between here yet, and then maybe like four more. But we are getting there. Okay. And I'll weave in here. So this is that, that first thread um, that I that we did the way knot with. So I was reserving this thread for right now when I could weave it in. Uh, so that's the starting point when I didn't have anywhere to weave it in yet. But now, um, just trimming this up. Now I have some stitches I can weave it into. All right. Oh, Amy says I'm bringing tatting and doily crochet pattern camping. Oh man, those sound like the perfect camping projects, especially the tatting. It's just like can fit in your pocket and uh, kind of easy to figure out where you left off and stuff. Um, the crochet doily too, but man, after doing tatting and then going back to that crochet doily that I'm working on, I'm like, wow, this is way smaller than tatting. Like my eyeballs got to get like way closer, uh, to see what I'm doing than with the tatting. Like the tatting, I feel like I, I could almost do in like really dim light. Oh God, maybe not. Maybe not that much, but more dim light, <laughs> campfire light compared to, compared to the crochet, crochet. But yeah, that sounds like the perfect, perfect uh, camping emergency craft project. Always got to have one of those. All right. About four more stitches, I thought, here. Then we'll just get going, get started on the next one. And blue is the next color. Ooh, and actually this might be a good, like how I was saying before, we could use colors that we have, I can see, I can see what colors I have more of now that, that I've wound it. And the blue that I originally used in here, I believe is this blue, but we must have used it a lot already because <laughs> we don't have that much left of it. So uh, we have a lot more of this blue and actually it's pretty close to this blue anyway. This is the um, scuba dive blue. So I think we'll do... We'll do that scuba dive blue instead. It's, it's a bit darker, a bit bolder, uh, but we have way more of it. So I think that's probably a good idea. Oh gosh, this thread feels so long. Fresh thread. All right, a few more stitches here. Oh, you're bringing your bifocals, Amy. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah. Man, I, I really am itching to do some, some more tatting. Suppose I got that, I got the um, snowflakes project that I'm doing. Might be good to, good time to work on those again. I'm at the stage where I have to look up stuff though. Like there's, there's um, with those snowflakes, there's a bunch of stuff I don't know for the next couple. Like I'm gonna have to look up how to do them. So I think that's what's keeping me from working on that. Just having to look it up. All right, yellow is looking nice and shiny and pretty. Yay. All right, let's weave in the end and we'll get that blue going. I think we could probably tonight at least get the, um, I keep wanting to say goalposts again, the, uh, um, what have I been calling them? Those guideposts, <laughs> goalposts, the guideposts, the guidelines. Guidelines. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for there. Get the guidelines in. Okay, I will save that yellow. All right, so let's do the lines 
first. So again, oh, what is tatting? Uh, Callie is asking. Let's see. Do I have a tatting nearby? Pet tatting project. Um, well, I have one hanging up here. <laughs> this is from my wall. I'm making a bunch of snowflakes. So this is tatting. It's basically a style of lace making, um, but it's made out of just a bunch of knots. So it's actually almost like tiny macrame. Uh, and uh, you get to use these really fun uh, devices. I don't think I have any of those nearby because I packed them. Oh, wait, maybe I do. Oh, no. Yeah, I packed them and I haven't unpacked yet. But yeah, so uh, it, you have these cute little shuttles that you make them out of. And uh, it's kind of, it feels like magic <laughs> when you're making it because it looks like magic. Like it's, it's, it's like, how do you even use those tools? It's, that's what's kind of magic ab about them. Uh, it just looks like people's hands are going like, zoop, 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 and then all of a sudden you have, have a design. <laughs> so it's just kind of fun. I just kind of love it. Um, oh, Linda says, time to switch to the blue scissors. Oh, I should. And I have it. I have it right here. <laughs> switch to the blue scissors because we're working on blue. But yeah, so I, I sort of just learned how to do tatting and I'm a little obsessed with it. Although I've been kind of jumping around with projects lately. So I feel like I'm, I haven't done it in a little while and I, and I really want to again. So I'll definitely film doing that some more. Um, I definitely have some videos in, in my, um, like one of my top posts here uh, on, on TikTok is, is um, tatting. So that'll give you a sense of like what it looks like and stuff. So I, it looks like I have a pile of this blue just hanging out in here. This is that mess that I haven't organized yet. I got to finish. I, I got um, most of the way done, but I got a few colors hanging out here yet. A lot of this is just the scrap though that I'm saving. Uh, just, just in case I need a little bit of thread to finish up. And these are both pretty short. So I think again, I'm going to start with fresh thread, but I'm sure on another project we'll use those smaller pieces. So, okay, let's prep this up. Okay. Um, so again, I'm just going to draw those guideposts. I, I'm stitching the guideposts, but I'm even like drawing them first. And I'm just to re, just to like recap, I, I'm kind of going in the, I'm making the stitches go in the, the direction of the worm, the inchworm. So like this one was this direction. This one is more vertical. This one is more horizontal. So this one, you know, I'm kind of going in the same shape as this. So this one I think is going to be probably just like exactly vertical. Let's, let's just make this full vertical here. So I'm just going to go right in the middle, just drawing a line. And then I'm just going to draw some parallel lines. I'm just kind of, kind of half have it. I suppose I wouldn't have to have it. I could just go right next to it. But I'm just putting a few lines in here that are all as parallel as I can get them. And then these are going to be basically my guidelines um, while I do the satin stitch. So I'm going to stitch these first and then I'll just fill in the spaces in between them. Uh, and that'll just make it way easier for me to get my lines uh, as parallel as I can. Okay. New floss. Get my, I don't know, 24 inches or so. Using the blue scissors now. This, they just look like they're friends. <laughs> a little stork and a little, little inchworm feller. Ooh, these blue ones are, look, I have this guy sitting here. They look super cute with the orange. <laughs> Ugh. Colorful things are fun. All right. Let's get my two strands that I'm working with. Zoop. And isolating that second thread. There we go. And actually uh, the red thread, I don't even think, this is all I have left of the red thread. And I don't even think this is six strands. I think this is like four strands or five strands. So I'm really almost out of that red. So when we work on the rest of these animals, we'll have to see uh, what I can use for like red alternatives. Cause we're trying to, I'm just trying to kind of use up. Ooh, I got a, little, got a little twisty twist in here. How'd that happen? Oh, there we go. All right. Um, needle. Okay. 
All right, we have about four minutes left, you guys. Uh, so I'm going to get this started. I think I'm going to go till I have the um, guidepost stitched. Uh, but just a final letting you guys know that during this live, and I'll give it a few minutes after, um, you know, in, if, in case you're in the middle of checking out. But during this live, uh, if you order $20 or more, I'll throw in a mystery gift. Uh, you don't need a code or anything. I'm just going to look at who ordered during this time, and I will throw one in your order. So it's kind of our special if you're watching watching the lives. All right, so I think, okay, I feel like disoriented now going in this direction. Well, I think I'm just going to do that. Or, you know, I guess we are going, we're kind of going... Oh, there, that feels better. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to keep going from the same side. So I'm going to start on this side and then go to the opposite side. I could do it opposite, though. I could start on this side and go that way. Maybe I'll do that. Just trying to think it through. Feels awkward to me now, all of a sudden. But we're going to do it. So I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to actually start here. Uh, by putting in that, that away knot again. So this is going to reserve our thread for later. And I'm going to come up and do these guide posts first. Ooh, see, they lay so nicely next to each other. And then, uh, then tomorrow we will fill in all these pieces. So I'll be on for like a few more minutes here just like two more minutes or so <laughs> just till i'm done stitching these guide posts uh but yeah like i said if you have something in your card i'll give it a few more minutes so um if you're in the middle of checking out i'll definitely still throw a mystery gift in your order oh this blue is so fun so like i said earlier uh, i think the original the original design had this lighter blue, which it would have been pretty too, but uh, this this blue is so super duper bright. But yeah, we have our cute little rainbow rainbow inchworm going here. So I'll, I'll be working on this tomorrow at 8.30 uh, p.m. Central Time again, and I think we will definitely finish up that last little rainbow color here, the little purple. Uh, and then, man, I think we're going to be able to start stitching this back stitch, too. So uh, the outline. So the outline's going to be green. Oh, I don't think I have... I didn't wind the green yet. I might have to use a different color green. That'll be kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, so we'll finish up this tomorrow and hopefully this second one. Because we were able to get two done today plus, like, get another one going. I suppose that's how far we got. Oh, sorry about my finger. I, you guys have probably noticed my finger. I got like a spider bite or something and it itches like crazy. It's like all blistered. So it's probably super gross. So sorry I keep showing that. But man, out in the woods, I get bit by stuff. But anyway, so we're going to finish finish this and this color tomorrow and hopefully get started on the outline. I don't think we'll get that all done. But dang, we might be real close to finishing on Friday, more than I thought. Because, I mean, we still have the letter I's that'll take some time. Um, but maybe not. We'll see. I don't know. We might get, we might still finish on by Friday. That'd be kind of cool. All right. So there's our guidepost. So this is what we're going to use to fill in... Uh, um, fill in the gaps uh, in between these. It's just going to make, it's going to be just so much easier to go from here to here and keep things parallel than, than if I didn't have any guideposts, then I'd just be kind of like veering all over the place. So this is the only reason for this is just so I can have um, parallel, more parallel lines or have my lines be more parallel than if I wouldn't have done, done that. So that's where we're going to stop tonight, but I think we did like super great progress. I think the satin stitches are looking awesome by doing the two strands where we railroad it by putting our needle in the middle uh, there. So shiny. You can see that sheen. Uh, I think when you, like you can just see the light hitting it and it just is shiny. 
Uh, and that's just the beauty of satin stitch. You just get like these shiny blocks of color. I think it's looking lovely. So, all right, you guys, let's, uh, let's say hello there. And all right, so I will um, wrap this up for the evening. Oh, Noeline says, put some hand sanitizer in the bite. It will help take the itch out of it. Ooh, I will definitely do that. Oh, Lisa says, I ordered a couple of strawberry trays and a pair of stork scissors. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate that. And I will throw in a mystery gift for sure uh, for your order. I will like make, make notes on all those tonight. So thank you guys so much for your orders. And like I said, I'll let it go another minute or two when I'm done. If you have something in your cart, uh, $20 during this live or like, you know, the two minutes after <laughs> uh, $20 uh, and, uh, in the shop. And I will throw in a free mystery gift uh, with no, no code or anything. I'll just see who ordered during this time. So I'll make sure to curate a cute mystery gift for your order. And I will be working on the intro room again at 8.30 p.m. Central tomorrow evening. Uh, and I hope to see you guys there. So have a lovely, lovely evening. And I will see you tomorrow. Good night.